Hi, I'm Jimmy Butler, and welcome to the Agile Digest, where we have right-sized topics covered in just minutes. Today's topic is writing Agile user stories. It's about six minutes. Enjoy. So what is a user story? Well, it's a short, high-level statement of functionality written from the user's perspective. So it's going to define who the user is, what they wish to do, and why they wish to do it. It's not a detailed requirement, but rather it's more about the intent of what we're trying to accomplish. It's a conversation starter between the business and the development team so that through progressive elaboration, they can explore what the end result will be for this particular capability. In the end, it will have independent business value. It will be small enough to be completed in hours to up to weeks. It will not address technical detail that will come later. And the story itself, when it's deployed and delivered, could be thrown away because the story is not documentation. So that along with the code developer are just simply inputs to documentation. So we have from the Agile Manifesto that we, you know, we want working software over comprehensive documentation, but it doesn't mean we don't have documentation. So these are just inputs ultimately to the end product. So what does a user story look like? Well, the most common story format is something like this. As a type of user, I want some functionality so that, and then you list the purpose. So we understand the who, the what, and the why. And so for example, as a worker downtown, I wanna be able to check the food truck schedule so that I know whether to bring my own lunch. And knowing the who and the what and the why are critical to determining the best solution. So now as a conversation starter, the business and development team can start to understand what this requirement is or what we're trying to get at. And sometimes it's not 100% clear simply from the story itself. It'll, it'll generate questions. And that's okay because at least we start with the who, the what, and the why. So how do we know when we've written a good user story? Well, it follows this invest model. And a good user story is independent, which means on its own, it can be deployed as an independent piece of business value. It's negotiable, which means that there's some flexibility in what it ultimately ends up being. Again, remember the story was about the intent of what you wanted to do. It starts a conversation, which then revises it through progressive elaboration. It's valuable. Well, we don't want to develop anything that doesn't have value, right? And so we're developing something for a user to do something of value. And it's estimable. That means the team can take a look at that independent user story and put some kind of estimate to it in terms of its size. And we have a, a digest on relative sizing and estimation. And then this story is going to be sized appropriately. It's small. That means it's something that can be done from a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, ideally not too much beyond a week or two. Uh, but it's something relatively small that can be done within the particular sprint you're working on for sure. And it's testable. I mean, it has to be tested. It has to have a way to be tested. And so as a good user story, you'll be able to verify and validate that the story was completed as done according to your acceptance criteria. I mentioned acceptance criteria in the previous slide, and all user stories must be accompanied by acceptance criteria. They're simply tests written in business language to verify that a user story is done. It creates the understanding about what is to be delivered. You can kind of think of them in terms of functional requirements, but they're not detailed. You're not defining every little detail, every little nuance. It's just the things that are important to say that, yep, the intent of the capability has been met. So for example, you know, as the worker downtown, I want to be able to check the food truck schedule so that I know whether to bring my own lunch. My acceptance criteria could be very simple like this. Verify I can see scheduled trucks for a specific date and verify I can filter by location. And you notice in the first one, I don't really say how I would choose that specific date because maybe I decide that how I do it isn't necessarily that important right now. It could be a field where I just type in a date. Maybe that date's validated, maybe it's not. Or maybe it's a calendar pop-up where I choose a date. There's a lot of ways you can define how that's done. And if it were that critical to me, I'd put it in my acceptance criteria. But in this case, let's say I want to leave the development team some leeway to figure out the best way to implement this. So all I'm concerned about as a business user, is can I pick a date, see the list of trucks, and then can I filter by location? And if my user story does these things, regardless of how they're implemented, I accept that they're done. And that's what acceptance criteria is for. Well, user stories are a big change over traditional requirements documents. So why do user stories work so well? 
Well, for one, they're quick and easy to create. I mean, anybody can create a user story using that simple format, defining the who, the what, and the why. Starts a conversation. Whereas traditional requirements are just too detailed, they're too time consuming to create, and they're often not read. And the intent gets lost in those details. And so we don't always know the details up front anyway. So user stories allow us to progressively elaborate. We start with an idea and we grow from there. And even if we deploy a particular user story and find out that it's not exactly what we wanted, that's okay because we're working in small hours to days to maybe weeks at most type of size stories. And so it supports the do, experience, learn, and adjust process that's so great about Agile where you just do something, you experience it, see what you like or don't like about it, learn from it, and adjust it. And so like in our example with the food truck, if we had deployed something where we didn't necessarily like the way we picked the date, well, that's okay. We'll just create a new user story and be more specific about how to create date next time. Because it's small, it can be implemented very quickly. And so from experiencing the first iteration, we learned and we made the adjustment. And user stories and Agile in general allow us that flexibility. And that's why user stories work. Well, that concludes this digest. I always welcome your feedback, so please email me at the email address on the screen. Thank you.